Well, good evening, everyone. We're uh, we're glad. Good evening. We're glad that uh, we're glad that you're here. If you're visiting, we are certainly glad that you're here, and we ask that you uh, stay around for a moment or two, that we can uh, greet you, perhaps find out if we can serve you in some way. Our next time of service will be this coming Sunday morning, nine o'clock for Bible study and ten o'clock for the worship hour, and we hope that you uh, choose to be with us. Don't forget to get a prayer sheet as you leave as a reminder during the rest of the week uh, also the bulletin and uh, uh, in addition to that that's, that's on the sheet but that's not in the bulletin is Vernon uh, sister who is at uh, at MD Anderson right now a TBD on on to be determined sorry on how that turns out but anyway please remember uh, Vernon's uh, sister the ladies will have their ladies night out uh, that'll be tomorrow night at six in the fellowship hall bring a, a soup and salad and drink ladies and if you have any questions you can see a tracy trailer on that and and get get more information also this coming sunday from two o'clock till four o'clock will be a, a baby shower for jeanette watson slash mullins used to be watson uh now mullins uh Stephen and lisa's daughter that's sunday two to four fellowship hall registered at target expecting a boy so please uh Mark your calendars for that. This year's fall festival will be Saturday, October the 26th. It'll be five o'clock uh, here at the building. There'll be games and, and finger foods and trunk or treat, which is uh, kind of neat outside. If you've never been to that, that's cool. If you're interested in helping, uh, you can see Stacy Norris or Jill Bowen. Candy donations can be left outside the secretary's office and monetary donations can be given directly to Stacy or Jill. So 26th October, 5 p.m fall festival trunk or treat uh, fun for all our song of encouragement tonight will be song number 259 259 our closing prayer will be by brother Rick Presnell as brother Tim comes I'd like to read this evening if you'd like to follow along from 1 Timothy chapter 1, beginning in verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 and following. <clears throat> and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. However, for this reason, I obtained mercy that in me first, Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who were going to believe on him for everlasting life. When Paul looked at his own life, he saw a purpose. He saw a mission and a ministry. And he often uh, declared, as he wrote to various churches, his apostleship and the challenge that he had been given to carry the gospel into the world, to preach this message everywhere. Because without this message of Christ, men are lost. Without their obedience to Jesus Christ, they are lost. And Paul says, I have given this everything I've got. My total service has been committed to this cause. We find ourselves in life in a variety of places. And it may be that over time the passions of the things that we've been involved in fades. I read an interesting article I didn't agree with everything in it the other day. It was describing marriage from a function of uh, um, time that goes on and described the first couple of years in this way and the next couple of years or a few years in that way and, and different layers as, as it worked through and, and the kinds of things that were seen. And in general, that is observable in life. What about Christians? If we were describing Christians, 
the first five years or so after one is converted, especially if it is from a, a background of denominationalism or they've come uh, to the body of Christ without having, uh, with no religious background, often is a period of great fervent service. But over time, there can be a cooling. Many of us have found ourselves serving the Lord perhaps for much longer than that. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, or even more years. And it's easy for time to remove some of the sense of urgency from life. Song number three is not the song we'll be singing in a moment. But I do want to read the words. A charge to keep I have. A God to glorify. A never dying soul to save. And fit it for the sky. To serve the present age. My calling to fulfill. Oh may it all my powers engage. To do my master's will. The next verse is a prayer to God. Arm me with jealous care as in thy sight to live. And O oh, thy servant, Lord, prepare a strict account to give. The author of this song says, I'm not asking for an easy pass. I want for you to examine me carefully, thoroughly. I want to be able to pass the most rigid examination that you bring about. And then the final verse. Help me. To watch and pray, and on thyself rely, assured, if I my trust betray, I shall forever die. The reason why we serve as Christians is not only for this world in which we live, but for the world in which we hope to live forever. Tonight, are you a Christian? Most in this audience would answer that question, yes. But you may not be a following child of God this evening. And we would not leave this audience without having the opportunity for anyone who is here to render obedience to the invitation of Christ. To answer the gospel call. Believing, if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And confessing, if you're willing to make that statement before this audience, that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And changing your life in repentance if you would tonight be baptized for the remission of sins, then you can leave from this audience one of God's children. It may be that you are a child of God. And if so, are you faithfully keeping your charge? The invitation is for you. Tonight, if we can assist you spiritually in any way, we invite you to come as we stand and sing. Tim, 758 will be our closing song, 758, and we'll do the first, second, and last stanzas, and then be led in our closing prayer. 
When this passing world is done, when I sunk a glaring sign, when I stand with Christ on high, looking o'er my history, then, Lord, shall I fully know, not till then how much I owe. And before the throne, dressed in beauty, not my own. When I see thee as thou art, love thee with unsetting heart, then, Lord, shall I fully know, not to then how much I owe. Something of how much I owe. Father in heaven, we are so grateful to you for the love that we experience being Christians, for the love that we experience being your child. Father, thank you for the love you showed us through your, sa through your son's sacrifice upon the cross. Father, we're thankful to you for this day that we've had, for the ability that we have to come out and meet with other Christians, to fellowship, and to gain strength from each other. Father, we pray for those that have been mentioned that are struggling, that are ill, and having issues in their lives. We, we f pray for Vernon's sister, Father, at this time, uh, may the doctors tend to her as she needs it. Father, we thank you for the leadership here at Maysville for the prayer and the thought they put into to guiding us. May we always look to them and uh, try to support them in the program that they have for us. Father, as we leave here this evening, may we go out realizing that every day there are opportunities. We don't have to ask for them. They're already there. We just have to recognize them. Opportunities to reach out and show your love to others. Father, go with us and keep us safe. Forgive us for our sins. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.